I, like I played up. probably the most weeks of my career out of Dominican or Cancun. I'll say Dominican yeah. probably is, is it. Yeah. I stand out a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. It's just a combination of, you know, having a good serve, return, uh, the so fitness. Be good at everything and you have a chance. <laughs> pretty much. That's, that's, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> What's up, people? Welcome back to Change World Podcast. Uh, we're here in Pompano Beach on a on a rainy day. Uh, on this podcast, basically, we talk tennis from ATP all the way down to the futures level, and we try to uh, have a little bit of fun with it sometimes. A Some more college serious. as well. Yeah, a little more serious other times. Uh, and yeah, and we have a pro stringer deal here. So if you need a pro stringer, you need a stringer on the road, we have a changeover deal. You go to the site, you check out with a pro stringer, and you check out with the code changeover and you get $100 off um, and you help us out at the same time. And last thing is that we have seen that about 65% of people who watch the show are actually not subscribed and we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So please like, comment, subscribe. You help us a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm Justin. I'm here with Jody and Evan. And today we have a pretty, uh, a pretty special guest. Uh, this man is a is a good friend of mine. I think we all in the in this room know him. Um, his uh, his work ethic and his achievements is a big reason why I went to USF. Uh, this man cooks with more garlic and pesto than anybody <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. He was uh, kind of the leader of our team at USF. Um, was a All American, top three player in the country with wins over people like Dominic Kopfer and. Cam Nori, so decent tennis player, I would say. He's played in some <laughs> some slam, some slam qualities and uh, played disc for his country. He might also have been the number one player in the in the country at getting code violations in college, yes. causing us some uh, yeah. some <laughs> six a.m. punishments. I could. <laughs> you may know him as Emmanuel, as R Roberto, as Rob. Uh, he's my good friend, El Cid. Roberto C, thanks for coming on the podcast with us today, man. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. I've seen a lot of uh, shows, a lot of people coming here, and it's a uh, it's great initiative for you guys uh, to hear out the players, their daily routines, what they have achieved, and and help out younger uh, generations and and see what all the, what fans can take away from yeah. uh, a lot of athletes around around the world so yeah we try a little thing yeah so uh, <laughs> i would say that is the best intro that we've had like, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 we do it practicing in the mirror <laughs> <laughs> my heart was actually being fast it's like trying to think i remember everything but uh yeah how was, you just got back from palm coast how was how was palm coast um it was uh it was a good week um i I played well the first uh, couple rounds. Um, I I lost yesterday against Alex Rybakov. It was a good quality match. Um, but overall, I feel very uh, positive with my game uh, this year and my my mental state. Um, you know, it's he he played too good to be honest. Uh, <laughs> Wait, why are you laughing? You started no, laughing because when the man was because mental state? first of all, congrats on the the title in Wesley Chapel the Thank 25k you. but i remember he and i were together in uh in peru at the end of last year and he's playing first round quite of a challenger and i don't know if he got hurt or something but i just remember him he said he was in a good place now but he was in a very bad place then because he was saying <laughs> like why am i here <laughs> like, he was saying, i don't want to be here like stuff like that and then to turn it around in three four months is is, yeah, is good been, yeah actually he's been through a lot the last few years so we'll get to that yeah 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 like you said i didn't last year was a tough year for me uh but i'm you know somehow the last couple of months been able to flip it around and and i'm happy where i am and and you know looking forward for the next the next event it's more valuable now um with them changing the the points at the challenges right like 25 points is a lot of points now like in you know, for guys, the challengers and futures guys, it's very valuable to get 25 points in one one week. Is that something that was on your mind or not really? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, normally I try to look at the, you know, like my goals and set some small goals and and 
I try not to think about it too much also because it can create a little bit of, you know, pressure and uh, it can mess with your mind, you Tell know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, you know, this year was uh, my focus is, you know, how can I improve? How can I, um, you know, get better at certain areas that I need to get better at? And, um, you know, that's what I've been doing since the end of last year. And I think... Of course, you're, when you're reaching the the higher final, the higher rounds in the tournament, you start to think, you know, if I get these points, like my ranking is gonna be this, and you know, I just try to move away from that, to be honest. Uh, but for sure, I mean, 25 points, it's uh, you know, for a guy that I, you know, ranked 500, it's it's a lot of points for sure. Um, and now even more that the challenger points have dropped a little bit so it is it is a big help and yeah. you know just trying to get advantage of that we were talking yesterday about how how strong the list looks for dominican republic so far like i feel like the incentive like it doesn't really what they did with the challenger points is now allowing a lot of guys at a high rank to play down you know so the yes. 25 in dominican is probably the strongest that i've seen it in dominican like a master's in 1000 yeah. Yeah. The cut right now. A master's twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cut's like three fifty right now. Three eighty seven, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Three eighty, yeah. yeah, ridiculous. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that's what happens when they decrease the points from the challenger level, you know, because to make twenty five points in the challenger, you have to make semifinals right now. I think, right? Yeah, semis. Yeah. 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 In, it's in less than 20. It's like 22 It's or a something. 22. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you make the finals over 50, you get 25. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it makes it even harder for, you know, the guys that are playing the challenger level to to move up in the ranking. Yeah. So you're going to see a lot of guys, 200, yeah. 300s playing a lot of I 25. I guess the kids. choice is, am I going to beat a couple of guys who may be top 200, top 250, or am I going to mm -hmm. beat a bunch of guys who are like three, 400 yeah. to get those, those points? And yes. realistically, like, Dominican 25 now is looking like a challenger that's last like year. middle or late to last year. For sure. It's that strong. You yeah. know, and there's also not that many tournaments to play in the week. Maybe eventually it's going to start being a lot I mean, more even tournaments on, the yeah. same week. But right now, it's, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm not seeing it as strong. And imagine how it must be in, in Europe, too. It must be. Will that affect your scheduling? Will you be looking to play more 25s? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to still try to just get the chance as quick as possible? Um, I will look to play some challengers, uh, to be honest, after Dominican, I think I will try to, um, get into some challengers. If, you know, if I have to play the qualifying, I'll play the qualifying. Um, ultimately, you know, you, you want to play higher, you want to play the bigger guys, you want to play, uh, you know, nicer events. Yeah. <laughs> nicer events, Free of hotel. course. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so that's, I think that's what every tennis players aims for mm -hmm. to play bigger events to play better players you know and that's what i'm gonna try to do this year yeah. going back to wesley chapel really quick when you talked about the later rounds you start to think about how valuable the points become did that happen at all that week or or was that week a little bit different and if so what, at what part of the week did that start to happen yeah yeah for sure it did i mean it's also if i think about it it's more of a motivation uh thing for me you know i i try not to think about it as a like a pressure thing that i need to win it's more of a motivation like if i you know if i pull this through like this is what i'm gonna i'm gonna get mm -hmm. or, or what i'm gonna be at you know so yeah for sure i did you know towards the semis and finals i'm like okay like this is this is a match where you really separate a little bit mm -hmm. points wise because uh, it's a big gap it's crazy. you know making semifinals and winning it it's eight yeah. points versus 25 so and it makes a big difference on your ranking moving forward you know um so so yeah i just try to use it as a motivation you know try to push myself and try to stay focused and do the right things mm -hmm. so i can give myself the best chances to be successful i was interested i saw a thing i sent to you on instagram Iga Swiatek was talking about um Last year she struggled because she had like so many points to defend and she was always thinking about defending her points. And she said this year, I'm paraphrasing, basically like there's no point in even thinking about it that way because every year is a new year and you're in a different place in your life. So everything is different. So just trying to do the best you can with that year. And before you were 
I think maybe 215 in the world, something like that. How did you, and I'm sure you at that, before that time, you were winning like a lot of 25s and 15s. How did you approach when you had points to defend in a week? Was that a big thing on your mind in those weeks or were you just trying to just keep doing the same thing and getting better, as you said earlier? Yeah, well, so when I first did the big jump from like four or 500 to in the 200s, uh, that first year was, was rough because mm. everything is a little bit new you know you're having to defend bigger points more constantly um so it definitely was a a, a the tougher year for me you know my second year mm -hmm. uh, because there is more pressure to kind of stay where you have been um and it is hard not to think about it like i think it happens to every player who makes a big jump <coughs> uh the following year it's always the harder mm -hmm. I, th i feel like uh because they have they want to you know either improve or stay at the at the range that they are kind of used to um so for me it was it was hard um i did manage to kind of stay in that range in the 200s um but i i was trying not to think about it in that specific week just like you said i was just trying to uh focus on you know trying to make as many points as i as i need um, throughout the year and make my schedule the best possible. Mm -hmm. um, but it was some pressure for sure. Do you have, I remember you spoke to us, you you left USF after you finished and then I think you came back to train at some point and you, you spoke about having like this notebook with you when you're traveling by yourself. I don't know if I'm gonna give away too much, too <laughs> no, much no, no, uh, mental good. processes <laughs> or whatever, but how important was that for you and what kind of things were you writing in there kind of to I don't know, help with your mindset or what you were focusing on? Yeah, I was just trying to write some small goals for that match, for each match. Mm -hmm. um, things that I could control um, and things that I wanted to achieve, you know, during that week. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like a lot of times we set goals that are, that a lot of times we can control. You know, I want to be top 100. Well, you can't really control that or I want to win this challenger or I want to win this tournament next week. Like it's something that is not completely under your control. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to just make small goals that are going to help me achieve that. Um, like so is it like easily attainable goals? Like the goals that you're talking it's about? It's things like, uh, you know, having the right attitude, um, like uh, staying positive in the tough moments. You know, you you have a bad call, you lose the first set after having some set points, like what is your reaction? You know, things things like that that you can control. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, yeah, <laughs> which is something that we work on every day, right? Like you're not perfect at it because I remember you having some issues with that in, in school. Yes. Yeah, no? I mean. <laughs> it's, it's, I, so at USF, we had this rule where basically if, in a dual match situation, whether it was a hidden duel or a real, a real match, if any player on our team was given a point penalty, which in college is direct, there's no one in. So if you curse or hit a ball out of the court or throw your racket, it's automatic point penalty. So any player who earned a point penalty, might be the wrong word, earned, who was given a point <laughs> penalty, uh, caused the team a 6 a.m. punishment, which was usually felt like physical labor, like it was rough. And and Rob was, uh, he earned many, many 6 a.m. <laughs> for us. We got a lot better with Rob, you know? We got a lot fitter with Rob. I was Rob trying to help you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he lost the set and he was like, let me help the team. Yeah, ah. they, they, they need to get stronger, you know? Um, yeah, I want to talk. You know what's the worst in college tennis when like, you lose a match or someone loses a match and, and they get the point penalty and then over. it gets handed down to the next person oh you that's rough I mean? too oh my god like that's someone rough loses. Too. but man i remember the worst ones i remember for me personally there was a week that we got i think we might have got two on the road i'm not sure how many those were to rob maybe both <laughs> but um we came back and on the monday we had 10 400s i think Time wasn't that crazy, maybe like within 125, and I think 125 rest. And we missed one time. So we did 11, 400s that morning. Then we still had our individuals, team practice. And then the next 6 a.m. was the next morning at, 
At 6 a.m. again, we had again. we had 200. We had 60 and 200s and 30, 30 on, 30 off. Oh, my God. So I couldn't walk for the rest of the week, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I could not walk for the rest of the week. But um, what was the memory for you of the, the worst for hundreds? Like, which one did you hate the most? Or the worst uh, 6 a.m. punishment, I should say. Yeah, I, I think the 400s were rough, yeah. uh, for sure. And And looking back... I didn't, I, it was worse for me because the team had to do it, you know, I, I tried to negotiate with Matt yeah. a couple of times. <laughs> well, just like, so you have to do the punishment and not the team? Yeah, yeah, I tried to negotiate, but he was a tough one yeah. to negotiate, um, I gotta say. But a few times he was, he was good to yeah, you, like he said. Yeah, there was, there was a couple of yeah. times that, that we, we came in terms. <laughs> and, and I had to do it, you know, for yeah. the team, but. <laughs> or, or he would say like, like he would be playing like let's say a top 10 opponent and he would say like if i win yeah we don't do it and then sometimes matt would say yeah and man never lost in college so it was a good yeah it was a good day when that when that came up yeah yeah i mean it, it was rough just the waking up having the whole team like <laughs> you know doing a thing because you did something like but we couldn't be mad because at the time we probably were like top 15 in the country and he never lost so it's like it's like ah rough <laughs> but if it, if it was like somebody so you had to do the fitness and be very good yeah then, but like, if it was somebody like playing six or losing it, then it would be rough i feel like but we we yeah. were all such good friends at the, at the time too and but for me there was also like a couple weird ones where like yeah it was like an hour pe long peeling we, orange we had to come in yeah. at 6 a.m and we're scared like oh it's gonna be rough but i think we had like maybe conference was the next week or something he didn't want to kill us so yeah. we came in and he said we're going to work on your focus and like how you're going to be with your game plan. So he brings out eight oranges and we sit in a room in silence from 6 to 7 a.m. And you have to peel the orange and you can't be done before 7 a.m. And you can't look off the orange or talk to anybody. So, so whenever he left the room, we all burst out laughing and like, you know what I mean? He comes back and be quiet. And another weird one was like, we went to the football field. They had like a training field and we thinking we're going to do like sled pushes or something. And he says, we're going to work on your body language. So you have to, from the, I guess from the zero yard, from the goal line to the 10 yard line, I guess you like, you shadow like a 400 or something and you miss it. And then you have to really call the pop out. So you, if you miss a ball in a match, <laughs> he wants you to, oh, to jump yeah. and turn your back yeah. and like walk off with like a skip. Yeah. So we did that. So we ran to that 10 yard line, missed the ball. We skipped and turned and walked back to the 10 yard line for an hour straight. The pop out. The pop yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Em embrace uh, preparing ourselves when we miss, <laughs> like how to react, you know. We're practicing how to miss for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you also, I remember you getting mad in FIFA too. We played FIFA in yeah. Arkansas, and like yeah. I could tell that there was more there, you know, like yeah. <laughs> there was something. I'm, you were suppressing it, you know. Yeah. Like, you should have seen him, seen him against Finn Meineke when he would get pissed in oh, FIFA. Yeah. We will kill each other. Get to the to the, to the kitchen and grab a knife, man. <laughs> We had a lot of fun. Though, that was some good times. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm very competitive, and in those games, like I just get a little <laughs> crazy if I start losing. But but what was the dumbest six a.m. I went in mind. I gotta say that I remember it was probably the the orange. <laughs> but I mean that you that you got like oh, your point penalty. Like how did you achieve it? How did well, you earn it? Achieve How did I achieve it? Yeah, it's How a big achievement. <laughs> big achievement. Um, I don't know if you agree with me, but I saw one Alex Vukic. We were playing like a hidden duel before the season started. He was playing Vukic, who was like top 100 now. In Illinois? We were playing in Florida, bro. Oh, like some Florida. club. We played at some hard courts. Not at our school, but there was like Illinois, TCU, and other teams come. Oh, and yeah. I think he might have won the first set or lost the first set and went down a break. And... Usually, you get a 6 a.m. by like doing something. The, like a ball, he, a winner got hit on him, a ball bounced off the fence, and Rob literally just <laughs> tapped the ball <laughs> over the fence. Yeah. But even in anger, he yeah, just, yeah. He just yeah. tapped it over the fence, and we had a 6 a.m. the next day, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, like you said, there's no warning. You know? yeah. So, like, if you do a little something <laughs> that the refs can 
can you know mess up uh, m- mess you up with they will just give you a point right uh, away there were a couple of times like i i remember i did that and i literally like just put the racket on the floor like this <laughs> <laughs> and it's like point topic. penalty yeah. and i'm like uh, i was like are you kidding me in that moment are you thinking of the match or are you thinking no. of 6 a.m no i'm thinking 6 a.m <laughs> <laughs> After that, like my mind for like yeah. 30 minutes is just yeah. thinking. But when you get him upset, he actually played way better. So it was yeah. like almost was good for us. Yeah. yeah. I'll do the True. last thing to do with bad tempo and we can never talk about it again. Uh, <laughs> so last year when Rob was not in a great place, like he wasn't in, he wasn't the Rob of today. He was the Rob of last year going through it. We played in Dominican 25K, I think in the quarters. And it's about a like, I think I won the first, he won the second. It might have been, I think, one all in the second, in the third. And I want to say, like, 15 all. And, yeah, he's not happy, obviously. So he, he misses the first serve, and the ball rolls back to him. And in one motion, he just, you know when you hit a ball off the ground, and then it kind of just scoops off the ground? He did that, he, did that. he, he turned towards the fence and did that. And it hit the, the the linesman in the chest. And at first, I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, it's Rob. Like, I'm not going to say anything. But then I was thinking, like, if it was anybody else on the other side of the court, I'm going to argue this. Because I watched Djokovic, like, on accident hit somebody, and the match was done. I watched, I don't know. It's happened before, and I, and I thought, like, all right, this is, like, the principle. So you have to... <laughs> But obviously we're playing in Dominican Republic and, and these guys are gods down there. We're like <laughs> Rob, I, Nick Hart, yeah, Bevel, yeah, yeah. I Peter, go, gods. I go to the ref and I say, so that's that's the match, right? He said, no, no, no. I said, but he hit the ball and it hit the linesman and he was angry. So I win the match. And the, <laughs> <laughs> the guy said, no, 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 nobody was hurt. So it's okay, we play on. <laughs> I said, that's, that's too good. I said, call Jimmy. Yeah, and Jimmy said the same thing. He said, yeah, nobody was hurt, so we, we play on. In your professional opinion, what do you think should have happened? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, if the rules say if you hit a, a, a ref, even if it's little, yeah. is it a walkover? Yeah, I've seen like people on accident. Like, like for example, I've seen... Because... Uh, yeah. Honestly, at that at that time, I did thought that I was gonna be called by the yeah. by the because, ref, you yeah, know, because he was sitting on the fence like this, like on his on his butt on the on the him. Yeah, like when it happened and Jimmy was coming, he looked like yeah, I, this is it. Yeah, yeah, it could happen, <laughs> but the, yeah, but, but also I've seen where other players they accidentally hit. Yeah. you know lines people not too hard and nothing happened okay. so I, at that point i just you know it 50-50. just depends yeah. yeah it just depends on the on the referee if they if they think it was very intentional or if they think it's it's worth a, a walk over yeah. but i was ready to just walk off the court <laughs> yeah. um, i wasn't enjoying my time yeah. <laughs> but we were all good after like but, we, we yeah. Good, yeah he didn't hit you no, but it's like, it's an odd situation. Like, yeah. it's with a friend and it's like, yeah, you know, was, but yeah. He's a good guy, I promise. No, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, going back a little bit to before college. So, you played on the tour for a little bit before you went to USF, right? Yes. So, how long did you play? A year. Yeah. Okay. I play, I play a year, a bunch of futures before I decided to, you know, this is a route I want to... I want to follow. I wasn't doing as well. And even, you know, it, it's a hard road to go through if uh, when you're young, you know, you're not experienced. You probably don't have the sponsors, the money to follow through <laughs> what it takes throughout the year, you know. So at that point, I figured college was the best choice for me. Um, and then, yeah, I was lucky to find a good school, good coaches, good group of guys to help me you know get better yeah it must have been nice to play at usf where it's also like i'm sure the program obviously was very good good training there but then you also have saddlebrook just right right around the corner from usf you spent some time at saddlebrook as well right yeah yeah i actually it was 
you know, one of the best decisions I've made, to be honest. Um, I met Matt uh, at USF and everything just seemed to be right for me, a right fit at USF with the new coaches, with the new group of guys recruiting. Um, I love Florida, so it was, uh, it was nice to, you know, uh, stay in Tampa. Um, and it worked out perfect for me. You know, I was able to improve a lot have fun also um and you know it's one of the best years for sure yeah. that that first year you came you had the red shirt what was that that experience like for you yeah i because like you said i took a year to play pros so like the first year i had to red shirt i couldn't compete um and to be honest it was it was a good thing for me um and even at that time i i realized that it was it wasn't a bad spot to be in um, because it helped me to kind of uh, set some plans of where I want to be, um, like have a, a good plan of training. Uh, you know, had, at that time, physically, I was very, I was weak. I was very thin. So it was good to have that year, you know, doing a lot of workouts, like a lot of 6 a.m.s. Uh, no, well, I wasn't no, no, competing. Not yet, not yet. I was like, not yet, not yet. They were, they were incoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, like, I, you know, a lot of training. That year it was a lot of training. And then in the summer I was able to play some pro events. You know, I was traveling, uh, playing some future. So, and then it just went by very quick, you know. Uh, it was very quick. And then before you know it, I was starting in the... Uh, playing in the spring uh, the following year so it actually turned out good and back then I thought it was a good you know good spot to be in yeah and With after <laughs> and after school how was it transitioning from I guess all American top five in the country to yeah now you on your own doing it like how was that transition for you yeah it was it was tough because in college you play one or two matches a week and then you train and then you play one or two matches and then you train like and like you said like luckily you know towards my second third year uh i was winning a lot so i was get kind of used to like just playing one match winning it and then a day off and then win the next match and then you know going through the season and not losing much um so when you go pros, it's a different animal. Uh, you know, you are alone. You don't have your teammates with you. You don't have your coaches with you. Um, and you're most likely losing every week. You know, you are playing these events that there is 64 players normally and there's only one winner. And you have to play six matches to win it. So the chances of you winning every week, it's very small. Mm -hmm. So... So I start to, you know, you start to lose more often. And for me, that was, that was, that was rough uh, mentally. Um, and yeah, that was the harder, ha hardest part for me, to be honest. The, the being on the road alone and, and starting to lose quite, mm -hmm. quite more often than I was used to. Did it, because in school, there was always a feeling of like, he's going to win. Like there's like a, he could be playing horrible. He could he could get broken five times in a set and win the set seven five. Like it was like he didn't matter. You know what I mean? Did and it seemed like you had that confidence in yourself that you were gonna figure it out. Did those hard times in the pro tour kind of shake that confidence, or did you always kind of keep that intact? Yeah, well, at the beginning, yes, you kind of translate that co that college confidence into the pro the pro tour. But there comes a time that you cannot afford those those things like mm -hmm. you say get broken five times or have a slow start or, or lose the first set and then all of a sudden like expect to win every time mm -hmm. you know you're playing guys that are very good you know um ranked high um so it it, it, it was a big adjustment for me to kind of um get away from some bad habits in a way uh and try to clean that Mm -hmm. uh, for the pro for, for the pro tour uh because you, like i said you couldn't afford to make all those bad habits in yeah. a way and, and get away with it mm -hmm. uh, but i did you know my belief is always been there you know i i try to 
work hard in practices and and try to improve so in the matches i feel the confidence that i can i can pull it off uh regardless of who who i'm playing mm -hmm. so so it kind of carries through that did did these like the adjustment to the pro tour like saying you know you don't have your team you don't have your coaches this sort of stuff now you're on your your own did that give you a bigger appreciation for the weeks that you spent in like davis cup or the CAC games, Pan Am games, these kind of weeks that you get to be with a team, especially since it's where you're from, your country. Did that, did, is that something you look forward to because of how tough the, the road was? That is a segue. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> definitely. I think, uh, I think most tennis players will agree with, with what I have to say is that Davis Cup and all those team events are extremely um extremely helpful and and fun for the tennis players to play throughout the year because they are normally on their own and they are playing for themselves you know when you are playing davis cup you're playing pan-american games you're playing for someone for something bigger than, than yourself you're playing for your country for your teammates for the coaches so and you're surrounded by you know a group of guys uh throughout the week that is like they're cheering you on so it's it, it's a different you know completely different uh, scenario and i love every second of it to be honest um and i think most tennis players yeah. will agree with that it must have sure. been fun to play in because you guys were very successful as a team like especially in davis cup when you had victor bebo you yeah this is when nick started to get better peter yeah um Olivares, like the team was strong. Like yeah. The team was very strong. Yeah, yeah, we had a great team. Uh, I started playing Davis Cup when Victor and Bebo were, you know, one and two, and it was always fun. I was in college at that time. Uh, so, you know, I was going from, you know, playing college tennis to go to these team events as well. So it was, it was definitely, we always had a blast. We had a great team, obviously, what Victor did, you know, was amazing, and Bebo too. Um, so for me to kind of uh, learn from them and start doing my own uh, my own thing, it was a, a big help and it's something very valuable. Yeah. Like we value it a lot for sure. This was uh, one of the Instagram questions since we're here already. Um, this question was from Scott um, in Calgary. The question was, how much did it help to have Victor Estrella Burgos Paved the way for players from the Dominican Republic. Oh, Scott, yeah. Uh, <laughs> great people stayed there uh, many years ago in Calgary. They housed me um, and they still stay in touch, which is great. And I hope to to see them at some point and be back in Canada. It's been a while. Um, yeah, Victor has been a big help, I think, obviously, for every tennis player in Dominica. And, you know, they... Uh, you can see with what you can achieve with hard work and dedication um, and also having him close. Uh, he was actually, uh, he was part of my team and he still is. I talk to him quite often um, and we trained a lot last year, you know, when I was starting to play again after my injuries. Um, so it's it's a big help to to be surrounded by these type of players and this type of careers that they have achieved um and i think you know i speak with the other guys too they uh, for them to kind of have someone that has done has reached such highs it's it's a big it's a big plus for sure and um, obviously no one here is getting younger but victor is somebody who at a late stage in his career, made that jump. I don't know how old he was exactly, maybe 31, 32. He was 32 when he made top 100, I think, yeah. for the first time. Yeah. So I guess he was going for years and years and years, and he finally achieved that. What kind of advice has he given you, and I guess what kind of encouragement has he given you as you, you enter in the 30s now and like trying to still achieve, I guess, your dreams of being a top, top player? Yeah, the first thing that... Uh, the first thing is to obviously stay motivated and still have the the drive the drive to to achieve things you know once you lose that then you don't have anything because everything is gonna be tough you know to wake up to do 
two hours of fitness and then practice. Two and then hours of fitness? You do two hours of fitness? Well, sometimes. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Look at them. Uh, in the preseason. <laughs> <laughs> in the preseason. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, like the daily work. If you're not motivated, then you, there's something you have to look looking forward to. Um, and if you lose that, then it's, it's tough to, you know, to travel, to play, to do all the things, all the routines that you have to do to make yourself suce- successful. Um, but the biggest takeaway with Victor is that there is no limit on, on, you know, on when to achieve things, you know. There was nobody that did what he did before and he did it anyway. So so if you believe in yourself and you believe of, on the things that you want to achieve and work towards that, then you have a big chance of success. Yeah. So you spoke there about about motivation. I personally have been through a lot of like injuries, a lot of BS like that. This man here has had hip surgery. This one over here, I guess, having his first little, not maybe first, but one Got of his to be first. Evan never gets one hurt. of his <laughs> one of his few, I guess, battles with, I guess, the body not doing what you wanted to do. You've also had some some bad luck, like with the the broken foot uh, saga you had going on over there. Tell people kind of what actually happened with you and your and your feet, and kind of how did you keep that belief and motivation alive when you're going through those those times. Yeah, so I I think two years ago, um, I I was running uh, and I stepped on like uneven surface in the street. I was, you know, listening to music and I didn't see and my foot got stuck and it, I fractured uh, my foot, the, the fifth metatarsal. That's and good English, man. Good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and yeah, at that time, you know, it was a big, it was my first big injury, you know, throughout all those years. I, I, <laughs> luckily, I've been injury free. I have a few things here and there, but like it's, you know, a week, maybe two weeks. What were you ranked around this time? I was like 280. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So for me, it was a big shock, obviously, um, to go through that and having to stop. Uh, but also, it was it was nice to kind of take a step back and and take some time for myself for my f- like with to spend with my family because tennis is all year long you know you're playing from january to december almost and then you have like a week two weeks off and then you have to like do the preseason and then start in january again like mm-hmm. there's no time to really spend on yourself to like kind of spend time with your family um, even the holidays are a rush, you know, in Christmas, you have to be training every day, New Year's also. So so for me to kind of stay, take a step back and just relax, take time with my family, take time for myself, it was actually very helpful. Um, and at that time, you know, a couple of weeks into it, I started to, uh, to see the value in that. Mm-hmm. So I started to enjoy almost being in crutches, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, of course, there was some times that I was uh, not looking forward to, to train and start all over again. But, um, you know, after some time, you know, after the therapy went on and I started to feel better, um, then it was time to start training again. Um, and I did I start training again. I did a nice, you know, six, seven weeks block tr- uh, training blocks after all the therapy and all that. Um, and then I came back. I did well the first tournament I won it the 25k and then the second week it happened again the same yeah. bone um I was there that day I yeah. saw it I literally just got to the courts and it must have like the very first point I saw and I was, was like, on court this time it was on court oh, this okay. time yeah I was playing uh I think the second round or quarterfinals of the the tournament of the second tournament in Dominican um and I went for a backhand and I just heard a pop the last time i didn't hear a pop um and this time i did hear it and i knew right away it was broken um so so yeah i just you know i didn't step on the foot i went straight to the like to the wall and then yeah went to the hospital took some x-rays and it was a bigger fracture this time um so that means that 
it was a longer healing time um and yeah uh fast i just remember this day like looking you couldn't see that something happened like i couldn't see with my eyes that something happened i just remember after the point you just looked up and you said i broke my foot again yeah yeah i was i actually victor was there and six so uh and my dad also and i told him right away like it's i fractured it again <laughs> um so yeah evidently you know went to the hospital x-rays and all that and it was fracture again um and it was a bigger fracture so the time was much longer than the previous one um i had to i remember the orthopedic said you know uh it's gonna take maybe nine weeks ten weeks um and then it took longer it just kept getting longer you know i will go in the 10th week i will get an x-ray he will be like no it's not it's not healed so then two weeks later another x-ray so is no. that what happened the first time like was it not completely healed from the first yes, time yes the first time i started too soon and too quick um as soon as i could like walk i just started to train a lot and mm -hmm. do a lot of fitness try to like uh catch recover up, yeah. catch up a little bit and try to make up for lost time exactly yeah. was, was that against what they advised or were you at that time in your mind frame were you on at that time they said you know the bone is 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 good to go um and obviously it was a progression you know uh you had to start a little bit you know the first couple of weeks and then go but at that time i felt good and honestly i just kind of let myself get carried away, get yeah. carried away <laughs> with training and all that yeah. and um and eventually you know the bone wasn't completely healed um and that's when the, the second fracture happened again so so yeah it was some some tough time the second the second time was even harder because i was kind of in uh you know i went through all that already you know therapy crutches um having to train with like no physical form you know um so that was very tough i got through that and then it happened again so yeah the first couple of weeks was rough you know um but i was just going through it and you know try to keep myself motivated um until slowly i could see the light at the end of the tunnel yeah. you know <laughs> that I, I could walk again and, and start training uh and this time you know we made sure that we took the right time yeah. um for the bone to completely heal and then uh it was much slower process uh, obviously training wise you know i started maybe playing for 30 minutes for like two weeks and then increase little by little you know and then with tournaments too i was playing very few tournaments at the beginning because i was scared and uh but ultimately it was it was a good lesson for me so this um, also, you've answered partly the question, but this another question from Spat on Instagram. It was how, like, why is it so tough to come back after the injury? And does it have anything to do with self-confidence or do you feel like the sport is improving really fast? That's a good question. I think, obviously, I think the level has gone up. It goes up every, every year, you know, you see guys ranked whichever it's good level you know you play futures you see the 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 level in futures challengers it's it's very high um and you can see it you see guys all the time in the challenger levels that they make a big round in some slams or they you know from lucky loser to winning the atp 250 um you see that very often um so the thing with the injuries is that the tennis is a very dynamic and very uh, like quick sport and the timing is very important, you know? So when you are hurt and you are not playing, you kind of lose that feeling and the anticipation of the, of the pace of the game and the points uh, and obviously the confidence because when you're sitting for four, five months, uh, what is, it's hard to kind of have expectations of, what you're gonna be when you come back, uh, especially when you have some limitations uh, from the injury. So I think that's the harder, hardest part for me. Yeah. Did you, uh, after you fractured it the second time and you healed and everything, did you did it take time to have confidence in your foot again? Or were you still like scared? Even if it felt good, were you like scared? About no, it? I was, I was. I remember even like, like two months in, I will 
because it, it was my left my left foot so when they open the core to my backhand i wouldn't even like i wouldn't even take a step with this leg mm -hmm. you know unconsciously like yeah. i would just do a crossover to my right trying to hit that backhand um because i was scared of you know moving this foot around uh you didn't want to like plant on the yeah leg. exactly i didn't want to plant it because that's what happened you know that was the movement that i fractured my foot on so um it was it, it took me a couple months really to lose to lose that fear and even when i started playing tournaments it was also uh you know i was fearful um especially because if it happens again then i, I need surgery and that would probably be yeah, a tough yeah. tough thing to come to come <laughs> yeah. back to so and you talk about like being fearful of that while trying to get back the confidence and the timing yeah. and the tactics and the yeah you know, it was a lot to, to juggle yeah. exactly and then also another thing is the rankings you know you you obviously you lose ranking by not playing for so many months and i couldn't get protected ranking unfortunately so you need six months to be uh, yeah. to be to get uh the protected and i came back like four months and then it happened again and then another like four months so my ranking dropped a lot um and then it's like okay like i literally have to start from zero again you know uh so it was hard mentally with ranking with injury with expectations with everything you know it was a lot of mess in in, in my head at that time but well, we, we're back in a decent spot now yeah we're now i'm improving you know? now <laughs> i'm a better spot <laughs> i will say though like not that it's i mean i don't wish an injury on anybody right but i believe that out of all the caribbean countries for someone to get hurt if they were to get hurt, a Dominican player will have a lot of opportunities, lots of playing opportunities, at least at home where they grew True. up to, to play. Because, I mean, when I was, my first couple of years on tour, they only had maybe three tournaments at the end of the year. And since then, now they have, like, three times throughout the year, they have, like, a set of tournaments for the two, three tournaments in a row. Yeah. So, um, it is good. And you guys have the challenger, too, you know. Yeah. So, how important was that? like having so many tournaments at home for, for your career? Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, like you said, it has increased over the years um, with futures and challengers in the area. And I think for for us that we're from the Caribbean, it's a big, big help to be playing in our region. You know, um, I think it's every player wishes that, you know, you see all the Europeans, they have a ton of tournaments in Europe and they love it because it's at home. Uh, they are used to the conditions, you know, they, if they lose, they, they can just take a train and go home. Uh, also, it's cheaper to, you know, for them to play all those tournaments throughout the year. Um, and before we didn't have that, like you said, we will have to travel all the time, far away, spend more money. Uh, so to have these tournaments, it's a, for sure it helps a lot. And especially for me, coming back from an injury to start playing at home like I did, um, that was a big thing, you know, that I could kind of uh, play at home, feel, feel comfortable, and then uh, do the other traveling. The Dominican crowd loves the Dominican players there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they, they, they love it. Um, I just wish, you know, more people will, will be involved into, like, yeah. futures and... Organization, too. I mean, these, these guys, tournaments. they get new balls. They get to practice on a full court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else, everybody <laughs> else playing with... with both that dogs been biting on and <laughs> and you gotta share a court with six people and these men they, they pull treat up us they well get, they, they treat us they well. get a full court. Yo, yeah. Dominican, Dominicans had like I have a lot of stories from Dominican. I'll tell a funny one. I was playing Bebo and I don't know if you were there. It I was, think I you won the first set. Yeah, so it was two weeks back to back. Yeah. The first week I lost like six and four and I think I might have had one or two set points. Yeah, I remember that. But I remember <laughs> I remember in that match, like in the first match I think it was um, do you know the Spanish guy, uh, Baluda? Yeah, the really small guy. Yeah. yeah. So I'm playing, and it's four six. I'm up six four in the tie break. Bebo doubles, but the ref doesn't call it. So I didn't play a return. I just like tap the ball, and I'm just waiting for him to sit out. So I look across at Baluda because he's in the hallway waiting to play, yeah. and he goes like this, and he tells me it's out, and I'm like, all right, whatever. Like six five, end up losing the tie break. I lose six and four. 
So I'm fuming, like, you know, I should have won the first, whatever. So the next week, and I'm dealing with the guy who goes, Peter May. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, yeah, so anybody from Dominican that's watching this, like, uh, yeah, I remember. There's that. one person, you guys will know, uh, he watches all the Dominican players and he just screams out every time a Dominican player wins a point, Peter May. Yeah. So I deal with that for the whole first match. Second week, I play Bebo again. And I think this is second round. And it's four all in the first. And I break to go 5-4. And I'm on the opposite side of the guy. And I go, feed him in. Like, <laughs> him. Mistake. Mistake. <laughs> yeah, mistake. And then we're crossing sides now. And Bebo's like in my face, you know, telling me like, come on, the guy didn't do anything. Like, you know, defending him. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you don't have to be disrespectful. And I'm like, bro, you don't know how it feels to be dealing with this yeah, shit. Like, bro, yeah. you know, everyone has to deal with it. You know, I, I don't react perfectly. True. But then I go to the other side and I miss a first serve and now the guy's in the front row and he goes, Peter May! And I go, love 15, he goes, Peter May! And I end up holding, but I, I lose the match eventually. But Yeah, 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 I remember that. <laughs> yeah, but, it's great to obviously play at home. I think anybody, you know, will agree with that. Playing at home is a special advantage, you know, to, to be at. Yeah, I, I enjoy the, the Dominican tournament. It's like, yeah. you guys are the most matches. home one there is that I'm used to. I mean, I've yeah. been, Trinidad I've been, too. but Trinidad I've been San nice. Domingo probably 40 times. Like yeah. I, yeah. I feel like I land there and I know yeah. exactly what's happening. Yeah. I know exactly where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's true. very comfortable. You pull up and the ladies who work tournament, they know you already. Yeah. Like true. it feels, you aren't the Dominican, but they, everybody knows you. It's like, yeah. you feel comfortable there. I, like I played probably the most weeks of my career either Dominican or Cancun. I'll say Dominican yeah. probably is, is it. Yeah. I stand out a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> On Sunday morning, they have like church, like right next to the like court, one court. Two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Court three around there. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Is it court three? It's, yeah, the so third the one. It's one, two, and then three, yeah. Exactly, yeah, right next to court three, they have that church. So if you play, like, you wouldn't know, you don't play qualies, but I play qualies in the morning <laughs> on a Sunday, and it's like people singing and oh, music really? and stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Not, that's not nice. That's not, not, <laughs> not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, fun tournament. Um, how supportive is the, the Tennis Federation to you? Um, because also, can you explain what Creso is? Uh, for people who don't know and how the federation and creso has helped you to this point yeah i mean it's been a big help um creso it's a it's a private company that their purpose is to help you know the best couple athletes of each sport and uh give them support financially and try to uh, make that push for olympics that's their their big goal is for more athletes more dominicans to to be able to play the olympics and obviously the Pan American Games and Central American Games. Um, so I've been lucky enough to be part of that group uh, ever since I graduated from college. Um, and they've been helping me out uh, along the way. And uh, it's been a big, a big help for me to, uh, to, be, uh, to be able to get some help financially. You know, all the traveling, you guys know how expensive tennis is. Um, so... So yeah, I'm very lucky and I'm fortunate to uh, to be part of that. And uh, the federation also, it's it's been a big help, you know, trying to uh, start all these tournaments and these small tours during the year in the Dominican for us to take advantage of. Um, you know, it's also a good initiative from them and for Cotec. So so I'm very happy with. Um, with the support that I've been receiving throughout yeah. my career. You know, I just remember that we played, you stopped me from getting a medal in CAC in Barranquilla. Oh, you remember yeah. that? Yeah. You yeah. and Victor. Yeah. <laughs> that hurts. It hurts a lot. And then I think that was the semis. Yeah. And then we lost to Colombia in the bronze medal For the match. bronze, yeah. yeah, I remember that. Did you guys win it? We won it, yeah. We won Dominican it. cleans up every, like, CAC. <laughs> the men get medals, boy. Yeah, medals, medals. <laughs> medals and the little stuffed animals. Yeah. Like, <laughs> see people walking around with the stuffed animals. Keep those medals, man. Get paid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Justin had one little right. topic here that we, we actually discussed last night a little bit. Um, the importance of the rally ball or serve and return. Which one do you think is more valuable? Like having because, a good rally ball yeah. or a good serve and first ball. Because we were talking about how how players look, they look a different level depending on who they're playing. For example, I watched Kipson play in Cleveland 
and it's also faster surface, so it's a little different. But he he looked unreal. Like I saw him play with my own team at Nate Pond with, and I saw him play with other couple other guys. And his serve and his rally, but it looked like overpowering. And then we watched him play against Giron and Del Rey, and he looked like he was struggling to, I guess, to keep get up. ahead and stay yeah. ahead in rallies. It looked either even or like he was getting pushed around a little bit. So what do you think the importance is of, like what's the biggest difference between, I guess, let's say, good challenger players and let's say good ATP players? Is it to do with the serve return? Is it to do with the rally ball or is it a combination of? of well, both? I feel like it's a combination of both, but I, I do think that the serve and, and plus one it's it's uh it's a bigger it's a bigger animal when you're playing those guys uh because their serve is very good it's very accurate um the percentage is normally pretty high um and they add pressure to you right away um you know if you're not serving well you're hitting a lot of second serves or you're not hitting the spots you know right away you're in defense um and then they can kind of move you around and you're always like in the defense uh, type of thing but it, it is a combination of both because you know you see some big servers that are not able to to break through mm -hmm. so you do also have to have some good ground strokes from the back um but uh but i, I will say that the serve and return are are more important to be honest so you think the damage is done earlier and you just have a harder time making up the i guess the deficit if like i don't know so like if they were if they were to play let's say baseline points maybe they would look more even but because maybe the first two shots of the other guys are more effective the guy can't really catch up is that what you think it is more yeah I I do think so I mean I or mean just be case by case with yeah each player. I think it depends a lot on the player too but overall you know if you have a guy that it's um very good at returning and very good with the serving versus a guy that is very good in the ground strokes i feel like throughout the year the guy with a bigger serve and bigger return uh will probably do better. have better results okay in today's tennis mm -hmm. because today's tennis is not like it was mm -hmm. five seven years eight years ago or even yeah or even four years ago. Yeah. Now, I think it comes down to serve more than return because you have a handful of guys that are very, very good returners, but at the top of the game, they all return well. You know, yeah. they're all like, and returning well meaning like when they can get their racket on the ball, making the person hit a, as tough as the first ball they can hit. So like when I think about rally ball, I tie in movement into it and I tie in yeah, like also. Consistency, consistency because I feel like I can hit my forehand just about as big as some of the best guys in the world right. but to be able to be able to do it while moving exactly. out of different positions maybe one's a little bit shorter one's a little bit deeper in the corners. if i'm running from yeah. a different direction to be able to do that consistently is the difference so like when thinking about rally ball it movement is tied into it and returns i feel like it's pretty similar across the board apart from the best returners in the world yeah. so then serve is the only thing that really stands out to me i think yeah yeah 100%. And if you can hold serve you get, you get the tie breaks yeah and it's like you know what i mean like yeah. you you're not gonna break 80 percent of the time you can hold serve 80 percent of the time that's possible yeah. but breaking all the time is not really that possible even if you have the best turn in the world you're not gonna break more than half the time that's very <laughs> unlikely yeah. so yeah i guess probably yeah serve accuracy and, and power yeah. is, is huge i mean it's to be successful in today's tennis you have to have a little bit of everything mm -hmm. you know it's i think in today's tennis if you only have a big serve but you don't have a f the fitness level or you don't have the ground strokes then you're not gonna be able to make a big push at the same time if you if you're very good at the ground stroke but you have no serve you're not gonna be successful either mm -hmm. um it's just a combination of you know having a good serve return uh, the so fitness. Be good at everything and you have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. That's, that's, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> the uh, basics. Yeah. Just have the basics uh, to, yeah. And, that's pretty much. And sorry, this is getting long, but. And pause. And for you, um, <laughs> you've you've been. I saw the serve change this year. The You're stepping up now. Yeah. Do you think that the 
has your serve been good so far this year? Is that why you've had better results as well? Is that a big part of it? or? Yes. So, yeah, I made a small change uh, over the preseason and it's been very good, to be honest. Uh, it's given me a lot of confidence with my service games to be able to hold more often than what I've been used to and have aggressive, more aggressive second serve as well. Um, and I do believe it's it has to do it has something to do with it for sure uh more of a mind thing mindset you know, yeah. mindset yeah just to have the confidence that if i'm not making first serves you know i can still hold and um also my percentage uh has been very high uh very consistently you know the last two months or so um so yeah, it's it's been it's been great to be honest, um, and you know hopefully I can continue to carry that throughout the year. For sure. I was saying this yesterday, tying into a little bit of the last conversation with what you just said. When talking about serving, so I was telling Justin that maybe someone who is not that confident serving may play their first ball a little bit safer because they don't want to feel like, you know, sometimes when you're being aggressive and going for targets, maybe sometimes it can feel like too much, you know, and and. If you do it well, obviously it's very effective. And maybe guys who can get cheap points and get themselves out of holes may be a little bit looser to go for these kind of balls. But someone who is a little bit more self-conscious about this serve yes. may not, maybe safer yeah. with the first ball. You know, yeah. so I think, I mean, kind of what you just said about uh, your serve helped me. I mean, reminded me of what I said yesterday ties into that argument. Like if, True. if someone is like back themselves on their serve, they can be more aggressive and take what they think is a risk on a first ball, but then you can look at it the other side, like what's more risky if, if you just put the ball in or if you go for it, you know? So, Yeah, true. I, I do think you see big servers, they go for bigger shots and they, you know, when they are 30, 50 or 40, 15, um, they go for something crazy and, uh, and they know they are okay. You know, if they mm. lose that point or they miss, they still have 40, 30. Or even if it's back to deuce, they still have the confidence exactly. on g getting through that game versus the guy that doesn't have the confidence on his serve. You're 40-15 up or 40-30, you kind of want to... I need this point yeah, right I now. Yeah, I need this yeah, point, need you know? Game, Otherwise, yeah. I'm in trouble. I could get broken. I could yeah. hit a double fault or the guy can hit a, a, a return winner. There's desperation there. Yeah, yeah, so you're kind of more conservative if you don't have exactly. that. Um, and I think that's very normal for every yeah. player depending on your style and your strength to experience for yeah sure. that's why i was i was saying like i feel like overall across the board there's no like poor returners uh, at the very top of the game um but then serve is uh, in my opinion the difference you know yeah. like it can win a match or yes. lose a match on yes. the serve yes. you know 100 um to wrap it up have you set any goals for the 2024 season or not to give too much away, if you can briefly uh, give us some insights into how you did that and what you've been thinking about. How what, sorry? Goals. For yeah, the yeah. Year. Like how did you set like them? Like how did you set yeah. them? How did you go about it? And how you went about it? So, like I, like I said earlier, like for me, I have small goals, um, tennis related, like, uh, um, like, improving things you know like like in this time frame i want to do this better and i want to do this better and um so in terms of results you know i try not to put myself out there with a lot of results uh, goals um, because like i said it's something you can entirely control but Obviously, as a professional athlete, you need to have something that keeps you motivated apart from improving your game. Um, and for me, uh, individually, I want to go back to uh, be playing the Grand Slams uh, this year. You know, my goal, hopefully, is to try to make the US Open. Um, if not, the Australian Open for next year um, and kind of uh, be back you know where i feel like i i belong uh yeah. before all all the things that happened to me and it's something that keeps me motivated obviously when you're playing those big events you know um all the hard work and all the things that you have done throughout your career and your life is like man this is worth it 
you know? it's everything yeah, yeah yeah it's it's a good feeling for sure to be surrounded yourself by all these great players and play these big events so so that's something to keep that keeps me motivated and it's part of the reason why i'm trying to make a push uh this year and and we'll see what happens well hopefully uh you get to these goals and surpass them because uh i don't know i've seen or i guess i haven't train with you that often but training with you yesterday i felt i was telling justin that from the outside you don't see necessarily that like subtle things like your forehand obviously if someone looks on the outside they will think that you like your forehand but then actually being on court with you the pressure is a lot more than what it looks like from the outside you know so i i believe that not that it matters you know, but I believe that you have the ability to push on and get back to where you were and surpass those levels. So hopefully we can see you thank be you. up there again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Good luck this season. We're not doing the thing no more? Oh, what? Oh, what, what? The main cue is alternate thing. The oh, you want to do it? I don't know what it is. All right. Look, before you go, yeah, <laughs> shoot. we're going to do... I basically stole this from another podcast. Junks and Philly, shout out. They called it start bench trade. We're going to call it main cues alternates. It's going to be three things. You put it in the right spot. What's the first choice, second choice, third choice, right? Match day, breakfast. You're going first watch, Cracker Barrel, IHOP. First watch is main. Cracker Barrel is qualities. And I hope is alternates. Yeah. The same? same. What'd you say? First watch main. Yeah. Cracker barrel qualities alternates would be I hop. I go first watch main. I hop qualities. Cracker barrel alternate. Cracker barrel alternate. <laughs> Sorry, Cracker barrel. <laughs> Crackerbell has the best pancakes of that group, though. In my yeah, opinion. Not, I don't really eat pancakes. Yeah, I don't eat pancakes. Really. Match day, you know, especially on a match day. Pancakes are yeah. great. Okay, on a Saturday then. On a Saturday, you're not doing nothing for fun. On a Saturday, first watch now goes to third. First watch last, okay? Yes, and I have maybe second. Crackerbell Cracker first. first. Got to ma- mama's pecan pancakes <laughs> all day. You? All day, yeah. Same. You don't eat pancakes? It's the same. First watch first. I have second. Crackerbell third. All right. We're gonna go. If you had to pick between these three things, you had to let go. So you had potatoes, rice, and bread. What do you mean? Let go one? Like never? Oh, no, like second. I guess put them in order. Potatoes, rice, and bread. Rice is first. Potatoes second. Bread third. And in, that's crazy coming from an antique and that loves bread. In order what kind of, of bread? what? Best. Like to best. eat? Yeah. Oh, the best. Just in life, like. Which one would you put oh. last in your life? I love bread. I gotta say, bread, rice, and potatoes. Bread first. Yeah. No the only way. thing is that I eat so many meals with rice, so it'll be hard to like. If I completely take away rice, I know. I know. Ever got rice eat. first. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think of you <laughs> 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 first? <laughs> Maybe rice, bread, and potato. I think I got bread last. I gotta go rice, potato, bread, French fries. For me, it's up there. Mm. Last one: sled push, pop outs, or peel the orange for an hour. A what? <laughs> for the six a.m. Would you rather oh. do? Yeah. So main what's main cues alternate: sled push, pop outs for an hour, or peel the orange. I'll, I'll peel the orange. First? <laughs> <laughs> What's cues? Dog, pop out seemed like the easiest thing to do. You shadow a forehand and, and you, you feel like an idiot up. for an hour. <laughs> you feel like a complete idiot for an hour. <laughs> yeah, pop out second? Call yeah. it? Yeah, and last is sled push. Sled push is normally shorter too, though. Oh, it's not It's not for a full hour? No, sled push, would, it would be hard, but it's not going to be You know what? I'm hour. saying that first. I'm saying that first. That goes to the top. You want to get better? I want to get better. I want to improve. If I, if I do it with my friends, <laughs> if I do it with my teammates, it's fine. If I do it by myself, it's brutal. I'll peel an orange for, orange for an hour for sure. Last one. Steak dinner, pasta, or sushi? Steak. Steak is, is, is main for sure. Sushi is last. Sushi is last. 
No, steak, sushi, pasta. Yes. I agree. Sushi? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a different kind of Asian. <laughs> Shoot, but maybe sushi. <laughs> sushi, steak, pasta, maybe? Pasta last. Probably, yeah. Tough choice, though. Yeah, the pesto and that thing. <laughs> thanks, Rob. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't gotten a pro string, I get one. If you haven't gotten some merch yet, um, all the links are below. Rob, thanks for coming. Thank you, thank you. And shout out to Pedro and Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go Bulls. Go Bulls. <laughs>